Hello everyone. I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. and I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class. Um, if I forget something today, it's because I kind of rushed at the last minute to prepare some of this. <laughs> so, um, no, I mean, I, I had the card ready. It was just uh, some things came up this morning. You know, you guys can all relate, right? Sometimes we have those mornings. So, welcome, welcome. Um, today is Wednesday, July 26th at 11 a.m. Central Time. I invite you to like, subscribe, um, share, blah, 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 right? Um, so I hope that you interact and have fun during this live. If you're watching the after live, please comment. Let me know that you showed up. Um, tell me that you're watching the replay, that sort of thing. Uh, today, I'm going to be sharing how to make a vertical easel card. I think I've also called this a side easel card, but a side easel card looks slightly different. So I think the correct term is vertical easel card. Uh, this is a card that can stand up on display. A lot of us love those. I mean, if we're going to make a work of art with our paper crafting and give it to a friend, we want them to be able to put it on display, right? Uh, so we're going to do that with the Layering Leaves stamp set. Surprise, surprise. Uh, masterfully made designer paper, one of my top favorite designer paper packs. We're also going to be using the Tinsel Gems. They are so pretty. Um, some vellum and some other coordinating product. I love it. You're all joining in and commenting away. Um, hi, Cindy from Coon Rapids. Love it. Love it when you tell me where you're from. I love it when you talk about the weather. It's just fun to hear, um, you know, things that are going on in your world as well. So please comment away. I invite you to comment because we have prizes uh, based on you know the comments so if you're commenting during the live you get entered into the live drawing and if you're commenting after the live within a week from when the video broadcasts then you get entered into a second drawing so last week's video we're drawing for prizes today yay uh, we have moderators that help us out lisa marshall is on facebook so say hello to lisa lisa's there to help you out answer questions guide you in the right direction um, Trisha Josephs is on YouTube and um, so they're both there to help us. I hope that you welcome them, say hello, and uh, reach out to them if you have a question. Okay, let me think what else we need to talk about. Um, I, think I, I think I mentioned it all. So we're going to now move to the desktop of my computer, my, my desktop computer, my, my laptop, I should say. And we have, um, let me push a few buttons here. We have some information. Uh, you can see little images of what we're going to create today. We're going to create that side easel card with some beautiful colors. I mean, look at those gorgeous colors together. I um, wanted to take the time to make another version in different colors. I welcome you to do this, by the way. I love it. People do that. They, they recreate the project, but with their own papers, their own stamp set, you know, that sort of thing. And then they share it with me, either via email or a Facebook message. Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think else. Text. Um, so I love it when you do that because um, it, it just gives me some inspiration, too. I get inspired by you as well. But I didn't have time to do that second one. <laughs> We have guests coming from Vienna, Austria on Friday. Um, they're actually flying in Thursday night, staying in a hotel, and then we host them at our house for about two and a half weeks, and it's going to be so exciting. Um, so we're just busy getting our house ready, and I didn't have time to make a second version, but look at a, the beauty of this card. You can see the measurements there, the supplies there. If you've already taken a screenshot, then you can get to creating right away, but this PDF will be available to download. Um, from my blog post that's connected to this video. So at 12.15, a little over an hour, you're going to be able to go in and um, click on the link that's in the description of the video. Those of you that are on Facebook, that description is not going to be there until after the video, but those of you on YouTube, you can see it already. Um, trying to think what else I want to tell you. I think we're going to dive into the demonstration, so I'm going to bring you to my desktop. Oh, it's so fun to see so many familiar, familiar names, you guys. Keep chatting away. It's fun. I peek up every once in a while, but I don't. I I can easily be distracted, and I don't want to be that person who, during a live, just has private conversations here and there with people. So, um, but talk to me. Tell me what's going on. I love it. Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> 
I saw Patricia's. Patricia says, are you going to start with them stamping? No, but my craft room is going to be clean. And um, I'm sure that a couple of them may want to do some paper crafting with me. So it will be ready to go. I am working to get this whole house clean. We're going to start with the base of the card and the base of the card actually is going to be half of the card stock cut in this direction um, so for that side easel we're going to bring the eight and a half by eleven card stock to the five and a half inch mark on our trimmer and let's bring that into view here then we're going to use the dark blade and cut and then we're going to score we're going to score at two and an eighth and at four and a quarter. These are the same kind of measurements that you need for any kind of easel card or a Z fold card. In fact, let me just fold those for you so you can see what I mean. This would be like a Z fold card. This is um, a horizontal easel, right? And this is gonna be a vertical easel that you can stand. So we call it vertical because it's going in this direction and the easel is actually going to the side rather than up and down. All right. Okay, so that's our base piece and we'll fold that with the bone folder a little bit more. But let's go ahead and take and cut another piece. Now this piece is going to be odd because if you noticed in the directions, I did put um, a 16th of an inch measurement in this one. So yeah, and some of you know that we also are hosting a foreign exchange student from South Korea. And that's soon after our guests from Vienna, Austria leave. We are just worldly people. <laughs> We're, it's so fun because, you know, the more you travel or have people that travel come to you, the more you learn about the, the world. It's just amazing. So, okay, so Garden Green, we're going to cut this one at not one and a quarter inch, but one and a quarter plus a sixteenth. And those of you that love math, that is one and five sixteenths. So it's just slightly over. I'm going to zoom in so you can see better. Here is the one and a quarter inch mark. And here is the one and five sixteenths inch mark. It's the sixteenth inch uh, mark right beyond there. So if you want to, you can just count five tiny little dash marks and that will bring you to that spot. We're making that the cut because when we layer on our designer paper to this piece later on, we want to have a little edge showing. Um, so that is the reason. We're going to cut this direction at five and three eighths. So it's just slightly shorter than our five and a half inch mark. Now you could keep it at five and a half if you want to. That's totally fine. But then you just you know, make sure that you do that with the designer paper too. Okay, another green one. I'm cutting all the green in front of you guys so that you can see how this works. We're going to cut two and a quarter by three and a half. So at this spot, we'll just bring it to the two and a quarter. I'm looking over at my measurements to make sure I'm right. Two and a quarter. And then we'll cut that one at three and a half. Okay. So that's going to be the front layer of our card. And then we need a couple um, tinier pieces. And I think I'm just going to cut a strip here at one and a half. And now I'm looking at the measurements on this side of my trimmer. We're going to cut at one and a half inches. Do you like my nails, you guys? <laughs> I used to do my nails. Oh, you know what? I'm going to cut that again because I want to give you a better tip. I used to do my nails all the time up until like one or two years ago. And um, then I stopped. But then I did it again, just because I love doing my nails. Um, my son's girlfriend, Jaylene, and I, we all went to the Barbie movie. And Jaylene and I were like, let's do our nails. <laughs> so we did it right before the Barbie movie. We should have done pink, right? OK, first we're going to score. Sorry about that. We're going to go to the three and make, make sure I'm right here. Yes, we're going to go to the 3 quarter inch mark right there and score. Then we're going to cut at one and a half. Sorry that I wasted some paper. You guys are all going, oh my gosh, look at all those pieces. But I'll use these later. I promise you. Those are going to go into my bin and I'll use them again. So now we have this piece and we're going to cut that one also at one and a half and one and a half. So what we've got here is squares that are one and a half by one and a half that are scored right down the middle. These are going to be little mechanisms that help pop out that front piece at us. Okay, 
Um, I think we've cut all the green. So let's go through the other pieces so you can see. Sorry for my arm in the way. So you can see what we've got. For our designer paper, we've got a piece that is four inches wide in this direction by five and three eighths, as you can see. It's just as tall as this piece here. These are gonna be layers that go inside the card. This piece is also five and three eighths inches tall, but it's one and a quarter inches. This is the one that will get layered onto the green. We've got a white piece that goes on the inside of the card, and this is two and three quarter inches wide in this direction by five and three eighths inches tall. So all of these are the same height. And then we've got this piece of vellum. And you're gonna say to yourself, why is the vellum, because it's gonna go onto this green, why is the vellum so much taller? And that's because we're gonna do a tearing little technique. So this one is two and an eighth inches wide, and this is two and a quarter inches. Okay, and then we've got scraps. Let's start with the scraps. So, oh, and I wanna show you this too. Let's do this first. This is the Layering Leaves stamp set. Um, it is uh, the stamp set that I designed. <laughs> um, it's a million achiever stamp set. When I reached my million in career sales, I got to be a part of the group that designs their own stamp set. It's a really nice privilege um, uh, and such an exciting process. I totally had fun with the whole thing. Um, I submitted some of my sketches to the Stampin' Up! artist and then uh, Jennifer took those designs and um, tweaked them a little bit so that they were drawn by Stampin' Up! artists. But these are pretty close to what I came up with and, and she had some, some suggestions as well and then I just shared some stamp sets from the past that had some beautiful script in it that I loved. Um, some specific ones. I can't think of the names right now. And so she used that font to help design these um, these general words. These are great. This is a great stamp set because it's one of those that you can always turn to when you need just that sentiment that says everything or um, just a little embellishment image. And leaves, believe it or not, they can if they can go with coffee cups, they can go with anything. <laughs> <laughs> so you can put leaves under anything, right? So this is the stamp set we're gonna use. And then this is the paper. And I tell you, you guys, I couldn't find too many 12 by 12 sheets left of it. They ha I have two of the six de uh, double-sided designs that are in 12 by 12 still, but the other four sheets, yeah, I've been using this up. I need to get another pack. So this is, um, it's got a fun torn paper look to it on a few of the designs. Some of them are just like hand-painted flower designs. Here's some more torn paper look. Again, these come in 12 by 12. This is a full sheet of flowers. And then this one here is um, a row of flowers on the top and the bottom. I have to hit a button, sorry. There's a little thing. Switch something. Okay, now we're gonna flip these all over. And you're gonna see the, the B side, okay? So you can see here, this is where I grab those sheets. Oops, I have to click that away. Um, but there's other colors in here. Like if you wanted to use the pretty peacock with the berry burst, or if you wanted to do like this torn paper look, you know, I mean, you could even use these two designs or whatever um, for your uh, papers for this card. So you can totally get into doing more and more designs or versions of this card, depending on the papers that you choose, right? Okay, here we go. We're gonna stamp now. We're taking the solid leaf image from the set and we're gonna ink it up with Lemon Lime Twist ink. Lemon Lime Twist is a green. I love greens. It's also the colors, color of my nail polish today. We're gonna ink that up by tapping up and down. And then you can see, because you flipped it over that it's inked up, but you can also see through the image, uh, the stamps, so that it's much easier for stamping. Photopolymer uh, clear stamps are just great for that. If you're a beginning crafter, dive in with photopolymer clear stamps. Okay, I'm going to bring out my lovely from thecountryhive.com dauber holder, and I'm going to grab my uh, garden green color and. 
we're going to ink up our dauber in garden green ink. So this is going to be a two-tone flower image. Right now the ink is sitting on here. Maybe some of it's drying. Who knows? Let's zoom in a little bit um, so you can see a little bit closer. I'm going to pounce up and down onto my ink pad. And um, thanks, Christine. Yay, I'm so glad. A lot of you are saying that you have this set. Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> when you um, design with it, will you also send me images or tag me or something? I, I go searching and I'm just like in awe of all that I find out there, but I know I'm not seeing it all. So I would love to see some of your designs. Okay, we're gonna take our dauber and we're just gonna pounce color onto the stem of our leaf image here. And what's happening is that green is getting onto the leaves, but that's totally fine because we want that gradual look of color from dark to light. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to turn my dauber a little bit on its side so it's not completely round. And that way I can get into these smaller spaces. And again, just pouncing away. I love how daubers allow you to put your finger inside because it gives it more stability when you're holding on to it. All right, so there we have our two-toned leaf image. I'm going to Actually, I'm just going to take that off to the side for a minute because we're going to need the green again. Okay, so here's our stamp. Now we're going to exhale onto it. So I'm going to bring it up to my mouth, as you'll see in my second camera. I'm going to bring it up to my mouth and I'm going to exhale, which puts some warm, moist air into it. And it's going to revive a lot of that lighter green lemon lime twist ink. And now I'm going to stamp it down onto my scrap of basic white cardstock. Now when I'm stamping it down and putting even pressure on here, I'm not rocking back and forth. And that is the beautiful image that we get from that. I just love that. Let's stamp another um, image. And this time we're gonna use the little tiny flower image. So we're gonna bring that out. It's got little rosebuds on it and a stem. And we're gonna grab the berry burst ink so we're using three colors of ink pads in this card we'll put our lemon lime twist away because we won't need that anymore but we're going to bring out berry burst which is such a nice rich reddish purple and it's also the color that has um, the designer paper swatch there that's that color so i'm using the corner of my ink pad and i'm just inking up can you see that if i hover over the white grid paper yeah so I'm just inking up the tiny little buds with my ink pad. And if you get a little bit of ink in places that you don't want it, well, first of all, avoid touching that because that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna get on your card if you're not careful. But if you accidentally, and I'm gonna do it on purpose because I don't think I've done it yet. If you accidentally get some ink onto the stem, let's move it there, onto the stem, Okay, let's do that now. So I, I went a little too far in on the stem. We're gonna grab a blender pen. And a blender pen is a tool that you can use for, and I'll just demonstrate now with some scrap paper. It's a tool that you can use for picking up ink on your block and then coloring away. So it's great for adding watering, watercolor looks without having to do like paintbrush techniques, right? But you can also pick up that watercolor ink from your stamp when it's in the wrong place. So there, we've just cleaned up our stamp. Oh, let me do this one too. I think there was a little bit of pink there. Now we've just cleaned up our stamp and you run it onto your scrap paper so it's nice and clear and it's usable for the next time. Now we wanna color our stem, so we're gonna bring in the Regal's markers, the Regal's Stamp and Write markers, and these are going to go um, onto the, the stamp directly with the brush tip. So the Regal's includes the garden green color, which coordinates with our ink pad. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just color directly onto our stamps. When I first started stamping, this is how I collected all the colors. It was less expensive than buying all the ink pads, and I wanted all the colors. So I took and bought <clears throat> all these markers, and I just did ink to stamp to color them, like that. Exhale again, and you can get two-tone colors that way, right? And now we have this beautiful little rosebud 
Okay, grabbing our punch. So these are the punches. Flip it over. This is your unlock button. So I've just pushed it forward. It's unlocking. We'll punch this one out first. You're just going to line up the stem and the top leaf in the punch, and all the others should align. I'm going to do that one more time because I'm off a little. There we go. And the others should align, and then you punch, and now you've got that fun, great image that you don't have to hand cut. Except if you're really desperate, because right now in the US, the punch is on, it's not really on back order, it's on currently unavailable. It's sold out right now, but it's coming back. So if you don't have the bow punch yet, I am so sorry. You're gonna have to wait until they're forecasting end of September, early October. I know, right? So we'll line that up and punch it. But hopefully a lot of you have it because it was around last year and maybe even <clears throat> maybe even the year before, I can't remember. We'll punch out one more leaf. Or you could fussy cut, you guys. <laughs> Who wants to do that with this one? Not me. There are our leaves and let's, oh, I forgot a scrap. We need another scrap. Gotta go back to my drawer. I forgot a scrap for punching our circle. So this is our one and three quarter inch circle punch, not in the catalog, but it is available as an online exclusive right now. So how nice is that? We have products other than just what's in the catalog. Did you guys know that? Always check out stampinup.com because that's where you're going to see um, everything and anything that's available. All the catalog stuff is on the Stampin' Up! store and the online exclusives, paper pumpkin stuff, all of that. Okay, we're bringing back this ink pad and now we're gonna take one of the leaves, probably the one that's the darkest and the biggest, so that we can kind of see where that is going to go onto our circle. And um, <laughs> I know, Linda, you're making me laugh. You guys are still talking about exhaling onto your stamp. Yeah, we did call it huffing, but we heard later on that that's a term used with drugs or something like that. So, you know, we stopped doing that. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, exhaling, exhaling onto your stamp. So I'm inking up my For You and I'm making sure I have room for it and I'm stamping it into my circle area. So you just use that as a guide. Um, actually keep that out one more time because let's go ahead and stamp our other sentiment and we'll all be done with all of our stamping. So we're gonna bring in the stamp that says, so happy to celebrate you. And I have to tell you guys, this sentiment is one of my favorites in it, not only cause it's just a, a wonderful size and shape, but because it encompasses so many reasons to send a greeting card to somebody. So happy to celebrate you. For what? For graduation, for birthday, for giving birth to a child, for getting married, for having an anniversary, for um, graduating. I mean, there's so many reasons to celebrate somebody, right? And so you have that, that perfect stamp to say it all. Do you also see that I stamp, I mount my stamps onto my clear blocks in a, a kind of a, a wick wacky way? <laughs> I do that on purpose so that I'm not looking at my clear block edges. I'm just looking at the stamp image when I stamp. So there we have our sentiment, which is straight on. We'll close up all of our ink pads now and we're going to come and start assembling. All right, let's work on this piece first. So we have vellum and we have, oh, if Rachel can pick it up. She now has fingernails that are polished, so they are a little bit thicker than normal. <laughs> um, we have vellum and we want to make sure that that's glued onto our circle, but vellum always shows glue, right? So the trick for vellum is whatever you're going to put on top of it, glue that onto the vellum first before you glue the vellum anywhere else. And also, Keep in mind that this piece here is not going to get glued on the top. We're only going to glue on the bottom of the bottom leaves and along the stem. So we'll take our multi-purpose liquid glue. We'll just put a little dot. Shake it because I forgot to put it in my holder. Um, we'll put a little dot there and a little dot there at the bottom of each of those leaves. And then right through the stem, 
just a tiny bit like that. Okay, then we're gonna take and grab our, and I'm gonna do this over the green cardstock so you can see better. We're gonna grab our vellum and we're gonna connect the two, but they're gonna be off slightly. Connect it at the stem, but up here they kind of spread out a little bit more so that we're seeing that hint of vellum there. Yes, I know, Janet. I did announce that. The punch is not available in the U.S. I don't know about other markets, but it's it's sold out uh, temporarily. Um, they said, forecasted it to come back end of September, beginning of October time. So just keep checking the store because sometimes the forecast is off and they get a shipment sooner than they think. So um, yeah, but the bow punch is not available right now. There we have that. Now we can take and glue onto our vellum. Because do you see, if we put glue here, it's not going to be shown. So we're going to put a little bit of glue again, right in that spot, right in this spot, and again onto the stem of the white. Not all the stem, just the stem of the white. In fact, I need a little bit more because I don't think I got it all. Oh, then it went a little bit further. <laughs> then we grab a tissue and we go, there we go. Get that off of there. Okay. So we're gonna take our circle again, there it is, and we'll add that to our circle, like so. Okay, next is our little flower bud. So if you're like me, and when you're, especially when you're on camera, <laughs> you're demonstrating, and you accidentally squeeze too hard, you can get these little fun precision tip bottles on Amazon. I have on my blog, and I haven't even shared my blog yet. On my blog, under shop, there is a tab um, that will take you to my favorite, favorite extras, and precision tip bottles are in there. You have to buy them in a set of 10, but they're worth it, because you can put other glues in there too. Um, but yeah, um, this is the same glue that I just used, but I put it into this precision tip, and I'm shaking it to get it down to the top here. There we go. Because it's so much easier to give it a squeeze and do a thin line. Ugh. I was trying, you guys, I was trying to do it just with this today, but it just comes out so fast for me. Anyways, you can also go to my blog to click the shop button if you want to purchase any of these products. In the description of the videos, the um, supplies are linked to my online store. If you are a demonstrator or you have a demonstrator, please shop from them because I want you to support your demonstrator. I just love to share. You don't owe me anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go. We have those parts and pieces done. Let's grab our bone folder and make sure everything's lined up and make those folds nice and crisp. Okay, so there's that. Let us zoom out just a bit because we need to do one more cut with this paper before we can put our trimmer away. The reason why I gave you the measurements for four inches wide, oh yes, Susan said, or share the extra bottles with your friends, absolutely. Um, I made this four inches wide because I wanted the paper to be from the same section. And when you put this piece on and this piece on, because we're gonna cut it in two, they're gonna look like they flow into each other. So we're cutting this in half at two inches now. And then just keep them in the same direction or in the same spot, you know, like don't mix them up. <laughs> okay, those are ready. Let's start with the little bent pieces here. We're gonna grab our seal adhesive and we're gonna put, or you could use the multi-purpose um, or uh, tear and tape or seal plus, whatever adhesive you want here. But we've put it on one side of those folded papers. We're gonna fold these back. So we have the sticky side down. And then these two little areas that are folded are kissing each other, okay? And we're gonna make them kiss each other in the middle so that they're connected right at the fold of that front paper area. All right, thanks, Laurie. I, I just, you know what? And they're gonna be a different color this weekend too, I hope. Ooh, see, so pretty paper. I love all this paper, you guys. I'm hoping to repaint them because I think the green is kind of loud. <laughs> I don't know. If I don't have time, it'll still match what I'm showing this weekend. I'm, I'm 
uh, demonstrating at an event this weekend. These papers are going to go now here and cover up that spot just like that. So let's take one at a time. Oh, it's sticking to me. One at a time. Put this one here. I like the tears going down, but you do have a choice. You can make your tears going the opposite way. Just whatever you choose, make sure that this piece also has the same direction. So I wouldn't want to put it on like that, in other words, because I think it doesn't flow and connect as well. Okay, this piece will go here. What I did is I made sure that I had a 16th of an inch border all the way around on those three sides. I'm not worried about the middle border. Um, oopsie. I'm not worried about the middle border because it's kind of a given that that one might be a little bit wider anyways. Okay, so there's that. It's about an eighth of an inch because it's a 16th plus a 16th, which in math is 1 eighth, just so you know. Okay, now we're going to take this piece and we're going, no, 16 and 16 does not equal 8. <laughs> it does in fractions. We're going to add this piece to, if it's a denominator. Gosh, I love math, you guys. I'm such a math nerd. <laughs> okay, now we're going to add this piece to our green. And we're adding it to this full green instead of just having a slight border piece because we want this designer paper to become the stable part of our card. This is the part that kind of holds the whole easel together. And using just a piece of designer paper, um, designer paper is a lot flimsier and wimpier. Um, not wimpy, that's a negative word. Um, but flimsier, it's not as thick. But cardstock is nice and thick. And we've made it thicker by adding another layer. This piece will now go on to this section, and this piece will go here. I encourage you to add this one first because this one will have wiggle room. So we're gonna take and add that, but we're gonna add it with a lift. Because we're making an easel card, we want this to be connected to something that holds it up. So we're flipping this over, and you can use as many dimensionals as you want. I'm just gonna use a couple at the top and a couple at the bottom, and then maybe a couple in between here. I'm not one of those people that feels like I have to have a ton of dimensionals everywhere. This is actually more than I typically use. <laughs> but if you want to slather your um, layer with tons of dimensionals, you certainly can, especially if you buy from me. <laughs> Just kidding. I used to say that in my classes. Use as much adhesive if you want to, as you want, um, because you can always order more. Okay, so now we're adding that to the inside. But do you see what I've got here? I've got a 16th of an inch border on all three sides here. And then this, when it hooks in there, shows that 16th of an inch border here too. So everything's got that, that little hint of garden green on all the borders. Very fun, right? Vicki shared her bottles with her card class group. How generous of you. <laughs> Love it. We'll take and add this layer to the inside of the card now. And this is sticky tape, you guys. Just see how it just stuck to my fingers? If you need to, you can shimmy it over and underneath even if you have to, but we're gonna bring it right here so that we have that 16th of an inch on the top and the bottom, and we have a little bit of border here as well. So that gets connected like that. Now let's do the top layer. The top layer involves some extra embellishment too. So we'll bring that in so we don't forget to use those. And we have to put vellum on again. Here's the thing, with vellum, remember adhesive shows through. So eyeball where you're gonna have this sitting on your layer. And that's where we wanna have our ad adhesive. It's not really too smack dab in the middle, a little bit lower especially if you're going to put a lot of it. So I'm aiming for this spot, but it's too big. It's too big. So let's tear to kind of have that cons that consistent look in our layers. We've got a torn layer there, and then we're just going to kind of figure out where the top one needs to get torn. So you're tearing about a uh, half of an inch of paper away from the top and the bottom. 
And when you tear, you tear in the same direction. Did you see how I was always pulling this hand this way? Okay, because that will give you the core of the card, uh, the card stock, whatever card stock it is. It'll give you the core showing. Okay, so that's a pretty good layer. Again, that's where I want my adhesive is right there. So I'm going to flip. Actually, I'll just put it right on here. I'm going to put some adhesive down there. I'm going to stick this down so that we see a sixteenth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch. And when you press, there's where your adhesive shows up. So that's why you got to be really careful with vellum. We're going to put this on with a couple dimensionals. And because tables are more stable with three or four legs rather than just two, I'm going to put three dimensionals on. And because we have a bigger space here, that's going to go here. Oh, let's not add that yet because I want to I want to be able to press this down. So let's open up our card. We're saving that. We're going to put some adhesive here. Let's flatten that down as much as we can. So grabbing our adhesive again. Sometimes you have to roll it with your finger to get it going. There we go. So we have adhesive on those two little spots. Be careful so they don't touch or they're going to be hard to get apart. Then we're going to lay this down onto the front of our card. And you have some room to kind of wiggle it because it's not completely pressing those other pieces flat. When you know where you want it, you're going to stick it down and rub. Now we can add this to the top like that. And we can grab our embellishments. This is the tinsel four pack. We have a tinsel three pack, tinsel gems, three pack and a tinsel gems four pack. And the difference is basically three colors versus four. This one has the lemon lime twist color on it. And I am sad to say that I do not have any more small lemon lime twist ones. <gasps> oh my gosh, Rachel, you're going to need to buy another one of these. So we'll just put one on for now. We're going to take the biggish one, <laughs> the big one, and there would be another small one there and another small one right on top of the white. And when you're done, that's what it looks like. So we'll show off the inside here and we'll show off the outside. And that is our vertical easel card. And when you stand it up, it's on display. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I love it. Do you have to thin the glue in precision tip bottle? You do not. You do not need to thin it out. Um, the, the precision tip bottle just has a tinier little tip. And so the glue flows out a little bit tinier, if that makes sense. Um, but you don't have to thin out the glue at all. No. In fact, please don't. <laughs> that would get it really runny, wouldn't it? Um, but that was a great question. Okay, prize time. So I do prizes um, every Wednesday live, and um, we have some winners from last week. I think what I'll do is I'll announce the winners um, from last week. Then I'll talk about some of the um, specials that are going on right now that you want to take advantage of, some things going into August, and then we'll draw for the prizes for today. So let's set these this way instead, because I think it's getting there. Is that better? There we go. Okay, let me bring in the prizes from last week. Last week was, oh, speaking of precision tip bottles, last week was Sally Ellsworth's donation to our, um, our prize bin. She sent me all of her extra bottles that she didn't want. So we have a couple of those left. The live prize winners last week um, each claimed theirs, and we have two rolls of ribbon left. So the after live winners that I'm going to announce right now um, you each get a roll of ribbon, silver or the, um, what is this called? The frayed white. Um, and then you get a precision tip bottle. And I will pull up on my computer the names of the winners. All right, we're moving over to my computer, you guys. Here we go, taking a ride. <laughs> we have... And I'm going to put my email up there to cover up ads. <laughs> we have Cindy Morgan, who was the winner on YouTube for the YouTube after live comments. Cindy Morgan, make sure that you reach out to me. My email address is stampyourartout at comcast.net. And then the winner from Facebook comments from last week 
is Mary Ann Robbins. So congratulations to both of you. Again, make sure that you reach out to me at my email address shown there so that you can claim your ribbon and claim your, um, your precision tip bottle. The first person who I hear from gets the ribbon of their choice. Um, unless you both want one different, then you both get the ribbon of your choice. If you live outside the US, by the way, then you will um, get to choose a tutorial for free. And if you'd rather have that at any time, even my US winners, you can always choose a tutorial instead of the, the, um, um, the hands-on prize. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, let's go back here and... Oops, I disappeared. Here I am. Okay, um, I'm going to go off of that for a minute. We're gonna go to my blog post. Um, yes, and I also have some past winners, you guys. Let's just do that right now since I have my desktop open. I have some past winners that are not claiming prizes and this is my last call to you. So I'm gonna show you what those are. Um, Let's just move today's prize out of the way. Okay, this was a prize, not the whole box, but this <laughs> 42 sheets, I think I was handing out. So 42 sheets of designer paper. Um, yeah, green just doesn't go good with my non-tan hands either. Um, but we're, I'm giving out 42 sheets of past designer paper. So these are all retired papers, really fun, really pretty. Um, I don't know that's a different pack those papers were for Julie Poindexter and she was a live winner by the way um, on YouTube so Julie if you're watching right now your name was drawn and you haven't gotten it yet um, let's see here also Lori Turner Lori Turner was a Facebook winner so Lori Turner and Julie Poindexter you got papers waiting for you I'm also going to call out the name of Terry Johnson uh, Adine. Adine. Terry Johnson Adine, you won the Wreath of Blooms kit. Um, that is waiting for you. You're an After Live winner from Facebook. You might have been live, I'm not sure. Anyways, you're, you're a winner from Facebook. And then we had some irresistible, hello, irresistible packs of paper. And those are waiting um, over a month ago, you guys. Not over a month ago, just a month ago. So these two people, um, Facebook and YouTube winners. Facebook, it was Lori, uh, sorry, Rosie Walker, and then Lori bon Bondison on YouTube. Claim your prizes, you guys, I wanna send them out. That's why I get them. <laughs> I don't get them to keep them. Okay, and then the last one, the last winner, Jacqueline Varblo, you had a tutorial of your choice that you got to pick. So, okay. All right, let's go over to the computer now. Time to go to the computer. Okay, we're on my computer screen and this is my blog, by the way. We're just gonna scroll down. If you want to shop, you can click here. You can click on these little menu things. Um, oh, let's just speak about this for a minute. Catalogs. How many of you are demonstrators? If you're a demonstrator, today is a happy day at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, which is in about an hour and a half, right? Hour and a half, I think. We get to see, no, it would be 2 p.m. Two and a half, two and a half hours. In about two and a half hours, we get to see uh, the sneak peek of the mini catalog on the demonstrator side of the website. And only demonstrators get to see it, unless you go over to their house and you look on their computer. But we just get to see it. We can't share anything uh, via the internet to you guys. And then um, next month we can start ordering the catalogs too. So this is where you can view the current catalog. If you want to, you can click on the link. Okay, we're gonna go back because that's not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to just the latest blog post. Let's just click on this one. Anytime you go to one of my blog posts and you scroll down to the bottom of the post, Underneath the supplies are the, the specials, the things that are going on. We're in Ju uh, July and bonus days is happening. If you are purchasing at least $50 worth of product in the month of July 
from a Stampin' Up! demonstrator or from yourself if you're a demonstrator. You earn a bonus days coupon for $5 that you get to redeem on an order in August. And you can collect as many coupons as you want. A $100 order gets you two coupons. Um, two $50 orders gets you two, you know what I mean? You can do it in different ways. So earn those coupons and then spend them next month. Um, yes, we have some online exclusives and clearance rack things. Um, new kit, new paper pumpkin kit. And then I wanted to take you to this because we're in the end of the subscription period for our all-star tutorial group. Every six months, we um, at the beginning of every six months, we um, have a month's span of time where you can purchase that month plus the upcoming five months for only five months value. So you save a month. I'm gonna click here for more information like it says and on that post, it's gonna take you to where you can see the group of people that I team up with. These are demonstrators from all over the world and we each create a project. So you get 12 projects every month in tutorial, video tutorial type format. They're called video classes, I should say. Um, so we just did Earth and Elegance for this month. Next month, it's Bright and Beautiful, Zoo Crew, Lay Shop, and then from the mini catalog in November and December. If you have not um, seen this before, I just wanna make you aware of it. If you're a demonstrator, this might be ideal for you. Um, because you wouldn't purchase from me to earn it for free. But if you purchase from me and you purchase at least $50 each month, you're going to be earning these for free. So don't buy them. Okay. <laughs> Just saying, if you're on my team, don't buy them because I give them to you for free. Every team member gets my, um, tutorials for at no cost at all. Okay. I think that's what I wanted to talk about as far as announcements go. Uh, next month, there is one more thing to share and that is kits. I'm a kit fanatic. I love kits, um, paper pumpkin kits, kits collection kits. The kits collection kits, not paper pumpkin, but the kits collection kits will be on sale next month for up to 30% off. So wanted to tell you that. Okay. Um, already, already, already. Uh, I'm reading what Lisa just wrote, but I, I missed it because it already scrolled past. I hope she wasn't asking me a question. I'm going to get the prize. Uh, ready to show. This is what the prize winners get today. Prize winners get an embellishment pack. Okay, so when Trisha calls out the prize winners for this, um, this, uh, th what is it, this week, <laughs> the prize winners get, uh, and I'm just gonna make sure I tell you the correct names of these. You get five of each of these, um, sprig trinkets, and um, open leaf trinkets. And then you're also gonna get the um, tinsel gem four pack, a half of the, a half packet of those, a half packet of the iridescent rhinestones. So I will package these nicely and the two winners will each get that. And then the winners that we draw for the after live comments will get that as well next week. So kind of fun, An embellishment pack, right? All right, our winners are, yay, we have Becky Kelly and Mary Kay. Congratulations to all of, uh, to both of you. Do you see how when I put this up here, Trisha, it um, does not show my email address. So I will, I'll click off of that and then I'll show the email address if I can go back to your comment. Hopefully I can find it again. Um, but yes, congratulations to the following people. Make sure that you reach out to me. So I'm just thinking, Trisha, that we might want to have um, your email notice at the front of it. I don't know. Anyways, we're always trying to perfect and get this a little bit better than before, right? So I am not seeing that comment again. I did it again, you guys. This is bad. So I have her comment on, on here and I'm not gonna be able to remove it because the comments roll by so fast. <laughs> oh, fun, fun, fun. Okay, yeah, it's gone. It's gone, it's on my head. <laughs> At least I'm under it now. I'm gonna put this over the top. Maybe that'll help. Can you see that? Yay, okay, there's the email address. <laughs> So you can reach out to me at stampyourartout at comcast.net to claim your prize. Next week, we will be live 
And I may have some helpers with me. Um, I have, like I said at the beginning, I have my friends, my friend Phil and his family from Vienna coming to stay with us. And so I'm not sure if Laya or Nora, his two daughters, or even his wife, Christine, would like to, maybe he would like to join me on the live. So you may see someone other than just me next week. Um, but uh, yeah, Tuesday, I'm sorry, Wednesday, August 2nd is when I will come, come back and be live for you at 11 a.m. Central Time. She clicked it. Okay, so I don't know if that will take it off the, I'm going to click here. Um, Okay, that just replaces it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll just put that over the top again. But I'm going to have to figure out a way to click it and keep it. I was so on it this time, though, Trisha. I swear. I thought it was doing great. Okay, so um, yes, stamp your art out at Comcast. I'm sorry, stamp your art out .com is my blog. I'll just set that there. And as we transition off of this video, you're going to see Trisha's comment again. Sorry about that. Maybe we'll maybe we'll highlight someone else's comment instead. We'll highlight Tony's. There we go. Oh, but it still goes up as high. I don't know. <laughs> Tony says, "Have fun and enjoy." Um, Bonnie, oh fun, can't wait. <laughs> I can switch them out. I just can't get rid of them. Can I? Or maybe I can. Let's pick Coco's. Congrats to the winners. And now if I click on hers again, oh. Oh, we solved the problem, you guys. We solved it. Because what I did is I clicked somebody else's comment. And they, like, let's do that again. I hope you don't mind, Coco. We've got your comment. And because it still stayed there, oh, yay, let's do Don's. Hi, Don. I'm going to see you this weekend. <laughs> okay, I'm having too much fun. I'll let you guys all go. Thanks for joining me. I hope you join me next week. Um, thumbs up, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And uh, now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye, everyone.